Hey everybody, Mike Iaconelli here, back out in the shop with another great educational tip for you today. It is the last in a three-part series on heavy metal fishing for wintertime bass. And today we're on number three, the amazing underfished flutter spoon. In the previous two episodes, we talked about metal blade baits, we talked about metal tail spinners, and now we're at metal flutter spoons. And a flutter spoon is another one of those great baits to fish when that water gets cold. And you know, metal makes a lot of sense in the winter. Think about what the fish are doing when that water gets chilly, right? They're more lethargic, they're not chasing as much, right? When they're eating, they're just sort of eating up or moving a short distance to eat. The other thing is fish positioning when the water gets cold. They're suspended, they're all in one zone, they're on the bottom, they're all in one zone. And the beauty of all these metal baits, especially the flutter spoon, you're gonna hear about it in a second, is that we can target those fish a lot easier. Our control of these lures is a lot easier than say, I don't know, a crankbait or a jerkbait. We can really control these metal lures and target the fish where they live, okay? All right, so this heavy metal one is number three, but it's definitely not the least in my list. In fact, it's underutilized in the winter. I know you've heard of flutter spoons in the summertime for ledge fishing, right? It's made famous on lakes like Barkley and Kentucky, the Tennessee River, where in the heat of the summer, they're jigging these things out deep. Well, this flutter spoon is just as effective in the wintertime. And the main reason is it does a perfect job of imitating dying bait. You know, fish in the winter eat a lot of stuff. They'll eat crawfish off the bottom, they'll eat bugs, they'll eat uh, small tiny minnows. But fish in the winter, they don't eat as often but when they eat, they want a bigger meal. And a flutter spoon really does a good job of imitating a bigger shad, a gizzard shad, a thread fin, a herring, even a dying perch or cisco or something like that. Does a great job of imitating that forage that's hurt or disoriented, okay? So let's look at the flutter spoon, show you a few hook modifications We'll look at the rod, the reel, and then I'm going to give you a couple of really cool techniques how to fish this thing. All right, so when you look at a flutter spoon, it's basically, the best way I can describe it, it's almost an elongated, very cupped style spoon. So a lot of good ones out there on the market. The one that I like, the one that I really prefer, because it's sort of already tricked out, I'm going to talk about this in a second, is the Mullix Lover Spoon. The Mullix Lover Spoon. It's great because it comes in two sizes. It comes in a three quarter ounce that's a little smaller and it comes in a one ounce that's really, it's a bigger, larger size. Um, this spoon also comes in a lot of great colors. But the thing about flutter spoons, I keep it pretty simple. I just really want to imitate the forage. So I carry a silvers, I carry a, a silver with a white on it. And this is a great one to imitate bait fish. I carry a gold with me, and a lot of times the forage is gold, like gold and shiner. Um, some forage have like sand bass, have a very goldish color to them. So I like gold. And then I carry just a couple other little colors. I carry this bluegill color for when it's yellow perch and bluegill. And then I have a black one that's killer on low light and dirty water conditions. Just a black spoon. But I keep it simple in colors. Um, with hooks, I want to show you that these things come out of the pack pretty much ready to fish. And when you look at this Mullix flutter spoon, you're going to see it already comes with a snap swivel, little O-ring on the eye. It's got a really nice, super sharp treble hook on the back with a big split ring. But on the belly, 
it's got something that is a sleeper. The one thing with the flutter spoon is that a lot of times when they hit it, they sort of headbutt it, right? They react on it or go up to eat it and they headbutt it. And you always try to find a different way to increase your hookups. Well, with this Mullock's Lover Spoon, watch this. They added a hidden double prong treble on the belly of the spoon. So look at that. You got the treble in the back, but now you've got a hook that's in the top front of the bait from the middle to the nose. And if you're saying, how does that thing do that? Watch. How does that thing keep sticking on the spoon? There's a little magnet. Look at that little tiny magnet right there. There's a little magnet on the body of the spoon. And that keeps that stinger hook tight up against the belly. So it doesn't impede on the action. It doesn't get snagged because it's protected by the spoon. But when one of those headbutting fish hit the top of the bait instead of the back, you got them, okay? So that's a really cool modification. The other thing on this Mullock's Flutter Spoon versus a lot of them out there, and I want you to look at this. This is a fluted spoon in the back. And a fluted spoon has beveled edges, right? Instead of just being an even cup, on the very back of this, it's beveled. It's got little bevels. It's got a, a, a flute to it, right? And that fluted section of this flutter spoon is going to give this spoon action when you're reeling it or lifting it. When it's falling, we're going to see it, and we're going to talk about it in a second, it's cupped. So it's got a lot of this. But because the Mullock's Lover Spoon is fluted, when you're pulling or reeling, now it's gonna give it this. So it's got a flutter on the fall, and it's got a shake on the lift or on the reel. Very, very unique, okay? So Mullock's Flutter Spoon, Mullock's Lover Flutter Spoon, and then with hooks, I wanna show you a couple other options on what I do with that bottom treble. Um, and when I'm getting in a situation where I want to slow this bait down a little bit, and a lot of bites are going to come on the fall, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the retrieve, I could slow it down by adding a dressed treble, by adding a feather on the back of this. And I do it a lot. I'll replace that number two or number one treble hook with a VMC feathered version. And all that, that synthetic hair on that feathered treble slows the fall because it catches a little more water. It also increases the profile of the bait a little bit. So in situations where you're trying to imitate longer herring or cisco or perch, it makes the bait appear a little longer. Okay, so I like to add a feathered treble. Also, in situations where I want a little more flash, I'll add a bladed hybrid treble. And this is basically just a treble hook with another small blade at the bottom. And on certain situations, I'd say cleaner water, uh, sunny days, a little extra flash can put a few more fish in the boat. And last but not least, a really cool modification I've been using on this flutter spoon when you're in a little bit heavier cover. You know, a lot of times when we fish a flutter spoon, we're around sparse to no cover. But this thing can be just as effective in heavy cover, right? I'm talking about submerged trees, brush piles, on deep laydowns, around deep docks. And that big single treble likes to catch some of that stuff. So when I get in heavy cover situations, I exchange the treble hook for a double assist hook. And this style hook, uh, they call it freestyle hook, is on a split ring. They're tied on a little piece of braid. Um, and this one's a dual assist. They also sell them single. I like the dual because I feel like it's a better hookup percentage. Um, they've got them in a lot of different sizes. This is a two-aught to match that big hook that's on the back. And the great thing about that double assist hook 
is it lets it come through that cover a lot better. Look at that. Just by showing it on my hand, you can see how much better and easier and cleaner, cleaner that comes through the cover. The interesting thing is that double assist hook, the hookup percentage, it's just as good as a treble hook. So don't feel like you're gonna tie that on there and lose fish. You ought to catch just as many. Okay, so we've talked about the spoon. We talked about color, size. We even talked about some hook modifications. Now I wanna talk about rod, reel, and line on how to fish this flutter spoon in the winter. Last but not least, I'm gonna give you a couple methods how to fish it. Gonna sound like a broken record, if you've been watching my last two installments of heavy metal fishing in the winter, I'm gonna use the same rod and reel I used for the blade bait and the same rod and reel I used for the tailspin. I'm gonna select a seven to seven four, medium to medium heavy rod. Um, my favorite for the flutter spoon is the seven four medium heavy Abu Garcia Ike rod. It's a power series graphite rod. A little longer rod that's perfect for this. You're gonna be doing a little bit of lifting with your rod, so I like those couple extra inches on it. Reel, I want a moderate to fast retrieve reel. Anything from a seven zero to one to an eight zero to one. I like the MGX Abu Garcias. I also like the Abu Revo Ikes, which are eight zero to one. And then last but not least, line. And on this flutter spoon, 100% of the time, not 70, 100% of the time, I'm gonna use fluorocarbon. And you're gonna see this as we talk about the action of the bait, but fluorocarbon gives this bait the most action. And braid really seems like it's too spongy and takes away that flutter. So 100% of the time, when I'm using this flutter spoon in the winter, I'm using anywhere from 12 to 20 pound Berkley 100% trialing fluorocarbon. My favorite size for these spoons is 15 or 17 pound fluorocarbon, okay? So there's the line. Last but not least, I wanna to talk to you about a couple methods to fish this. And when you look at this spoon, when you look at that cup, you really get an idea of what it's gonna do. And when this thing falls on semi-slack line, it's got this side-to-side -side movement on the fall. It's so pronounced that as the bait's falling, you can actually watch your rod tip bounce. You can, if you're watching your line, you're gonna see your line jumping. And when you first start fishing the flutter spoon, you're kinda, you're, you're like, whoa, is that a bite? But it's actually just, the vibration of the spoon. And so many, I mean so many fish hit when this bait is fluttering, right? Has that fall down there. So, you know, the first technique, we really wanna take advantage of that fluttering, that fluttering style technique. So we're gonna make a long cast. As we let this flutter spoon fall, and remember, we're casting in and around where the fish are living, we're gonna let it fall on a semi-slack line. So zero to 10 feet, right? When we cast it, we can just click our bail and we can bow to it all the way to keep that slight bow in our line, right? But when we get deeper than 10 feet, if we're fishing that flutter spoon in 15, 20, 30 feet, we're gonna use the feathering technique. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna leave that thumb bar engaged but instead of having no tension, we're gonna barely let our thumb ride over that spool. So as that spoon is falling and fluttering, the whole way, we're maintaining just a little bow in our line. We want this to fall on a little bit of slack. We don't want it to fall on tight. We don't want it to fall on super slack. We want it to just vroom, 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 flutter all the way down. So long cast, letting it fall zero to 10, you can just bow to it deeper than 10, Keep your bail engaged and use your thumb to feather it down, watching the line as it falls. Dude, you're gonna get that rhythm down and your bites are gonna be where you'll see the line jump. If you're fishing in 20 foot of water and the spoon gets 10 foot down and stops, you'll see some of those. 
you're going to see some different style bites. But when something different happens to that boom, 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 that rhythm, you'll see it with your rod tip. When something changes in that rhythm, pull back and set the hook because something's happened, right? Um, a lot of the bites on this thing happen on the fall. So on this first technique, we want to make it lift and fall all the way back to the boat. Super simple. So once it hits the bottom, boom, we're going to do a big rod sweep. This is the biggest rod sweep we've done in all this metal fishing, right? We talked about the stroke with the blade bait. We talked about the, the 3 to 12 with the reel for the tailspin. But now we want the biggest lift we've done. And it's from like 4 o'clock, like literally your rod tip on the water all the way almost past 12. But remember, this is the winter. This is cold. It's not the summer. If it was the summer, we'd go from 4 to 11 o'clock like super fast, right? But this is winter. So this is just a real big lift from about 4 o'clock, rod tip almost on the water, slow and steady, up to past 12 o'clock, almost to 11, and then follow that slack back down. And that spoon, when you lift, remember, the Mullock's lover spoon's beveled. So when you lift, it's going to shake on the way up. But when you get to past 12, 11 o'clock, and you bow to it and follow it back down, boom, 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 boom. And anytime you see a change in that steady vibration, set the hook, okay? So the first way we're going to fish it is lift and fall. Lift and fall. And I really like to continue that almost all the way back to the boat, or at least till I'm past where I feel like the fish are living. Okay, so method number one is lift and fall. Method number two is a hybrid retrieve of a slow roll and a short hop. And the great thing about a flutter spoon, especially the Mullocks with that fluted at base, is this thing also swims very well. And in this retrieve, I'm going to make a long cast. We're going to let it get to the bottom. But this one really likes to target fish that are lower in the water column in the winter. And all I'm going to do on this one is slowly retrieve it and pause. About every 10 cranks, I'm going to pause. But this time, when I pause, I want to bow to it and let it fall all the way back to the bottom. And what happens is this bait will start on the bottom. And as you reel, it's got a lot of lift to it. After about 10 or 12 cranks, you stop and you let it flutter. And it does that all the way to the bottom. It's keeping in that lower zone, keeping in contact with the bottom. And I've had a lot of fish hit it as soon as it contacts the bottom. It'll hit the bottom, a little puff of dust will come up. It looks like a shad or a herring or a shiner that's died. They stomp it. Great thing about that mullock spoon, even when they hit it on the bottom, look at that top hook right in their face every time. It's on a magnet, stays hooked on the bait. You're going to catch those fish. So a drag and lift with those pauses, almost a, a hybrid of a slow roll and a paintbrush, perfect second way to fish the flutter spoon. Let me tell you, man, wintertime fishing with heavy metal baits is some of the best fishing you can do. You've got a lot of control of the bait. It imitates the forage, and it creates a reaction strike. Give this one a try. Give a flutter spoon a try. It's not just a, a ledge summertime bait. It's just as good in the winter. Try some of them hook modifications we talked about. Try those retrieves. It's a way to catch a really big one in those cold winter months. I hope you enjoyed this last, the final series of heavy metal winter fishing. We're talking about the flutter spoon. If you liked what you're hearing, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. We've got really good content coming to you every single week. If you're already a subscriber, tell your friends. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell your fishing friends to subscribe to Mike Iconelli Fishing on YouTube. Great educational content every single week. Hope you enjoyed it. Good luck, good fishing. Heavy metal, rock on, baby.